next legacy. I feel like when I do Branded After Dark and have shows, I think when it comes to songs like this, and, and the song being remade with a classic BG's joint, there's only one group that did it right, and it was Portrait. And and my thing is when it when I think about the music and the and the and the memories that I get listening to this 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 not just this classic song, but of course a, a lot of songs that has uh, gone through the, the the music legacy that that Portrait left for us when they began in the '90s. Um, you, you think of songs like this, and of course, Honey Dip, and um, you, 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 Here We Go Again, which definitely was a, a, a timeless classic, and you know, it, it, it kind of gives you that that nostalgic feeling because I know a lot of people always say that uh, you know a lot of the '90s music was just like some of the best music ever because it's diversity, and and, and I think that's the case here when we uh, tune in to Branded After Dark, and your man Branded is in the building, celebrating, hanging out, doing what we do best, play R&B classic music and just give it to you like we normally do which is the best and build that legacy for all and uh the 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 guest that i got today it's a long time coming and i'm grateful and honored to have the group portrait in the building tonight on branded after dark fellas what's going on Yo, what's up? What's up? <laughs> i mean i don't know about y'all but I mean, I'm, I'm feeling nostalgic tonight, baby. That's just what it is. I'm feeling real good. You know, it's so funny when the song was playing, and I, I don't think I've never said this. This is this is Michelangelo. Uh, when it was playing, I, I told Eric, I said, "Man, it seems like it sounds better and better as time goes." <laughs> and you know yeah, what? Really and, 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 and this is and another thing I was telling them. I said a lot of people don't know that that was the last song on our album. Um, we were trying to figure out, you know, we was missing something. And then a buddy of ours, you know, remember the rapper Candyman? Mm-hmm. So I grew up in L.A. And he, was in a, he was in a room next door to us working on something. And he came over. He's like, man, you know what? Y'all should just do How Deep Is Your Love. And uh, I wasn't as familiar with it as I, should, as I should, but everybody else knew. And they mentioned it. And it was like, yeah, man, that's big. He said, you guys do y'all version. We decided to cut a guitar, guitar version. Mm-hmm. And it, didn't, it was the last thing we turned in on that album. Mm-hmm. Let me and let me say this: as a fan of Portrait and as a fan of the Bee Gees, and like I said, the Bee Gees joint it, it was a classic. It just it just seemed like you know people may have tried to do it and didn't really give it that that extra something. And I'm not saying it's just because mm-hmm. I'm blessed to have you guys here tonight on Bread It After Dark, but it, it wasn't another group outside of you guys that could do it justice, and you guys did that. I mean, you know, I love the Bee Gees. Everything the Bee Gees, big fan. So for y'all to be able to turn that in and, and, and turn it into, you know, a, a, a new 90s classic and beyond that, to me, I thought that was real good. So y'all got to be commended for that. I, oh, I, feel, I think it was so funny because all the guys were saying, man, we can't disrespect the... The, the true originators of it, and that's why we said we would do a guitar version because we could put our own and still give it on what they've done. And now our version is in karaoke, just like the Bee Gees version is. We have yeah. a, Bee Gees, a version in karaoke now around the world. So, you know, they made our own spot. That's what it is. That's what it is. Welcome, fellas, to this edition hey. of Branded After Dark. And get, let the listeners know who you guys are. Cause I know we got it. We 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 got the group in the building. So you know, Michael Angelo, we 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 heard you break out and speak first. So who else do we got? Let the listeners know. <laughs> it's Eric Kirkland, and um, definitely want to say it's definitely a pleasure to be here, be able to talk to you, bro, and just kind of you know set the record straight. I know a lot of people have quite a few questions. We've been asked those questions over and over again. So we you know, and, uh, and we are going to have really a. Limited. And we're gonna we're gonna have a section um, where I, I will go ahead and take a couple of calls from some listeners and stuff like that too. So if you actually want to call and holler at Portrait, you need to lock yourselves in. But you know, me being the host, I gotta monopolize y'all time real quick. So you know, all the ladies out there, hold on, hold on, <laughs> ladies. I got you. We're 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 patient people. But I, you know, my first question is simple: Where y'all been? The game needed y'all. Where y'all been? Where y'all been? Where y'all been, man? We missed y'all, man. We we missed that classic portrait sound, man. What's going on? 
Well, you know, we're still working, man. Everybody's still doing their thing. Uh, we're actually still putting together a couple of projects uh, collectively and individually. Um, Mike and I have been talking about putting another portrait project together. We, we're doing a, a 90s review, which is basically all the 90s acts, putting them back together and sending them out on the road. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's been pretty success, you know, pretty successful, but uh, when the recession hit, it just kind of threw everybody you know, a few major steps backwards, so everybody just sort of regrouped. But um, yeah. we, we've definitely been still writing and producing and doing artist development, vocal lessons for different up-and-coming artists, um, you know, and branching out into other fields. You know, there's things that, that all of us wanted to do aside from music, surprisingly. Uh, Mike has gotten into the medical field, and um, he and I both actually, you know, mine is a little different from his, but we both, you know, kind of branched out and start doing a lot of the things that we wanted to do aside from music, but music is our first love. So it's uh, we're we're back. We want to let everybody know that we're definitely coming out with another CD very soon. Yeah, we're working on the album right now, uh, but we've just been piecing it together because the market changes so much, it's so trendy. Absolutely. We want to still be, we still want to be in the mix with everything, but still be us. So mm-hmm. it's like. Uh, it was a little format we used to have back in the day when we would record. This is what we would do. We would record all the slow and mid tempo first because we knew it wasn't really trendy. And right. then the up tempo, we would record last because we know, like, every six months it could be a new sound. Right, um, right. Kind of the same way now. So we've been piecing, doing some tunes together. We're not com- completely finished with the album, but we got about four or five tunes. And then we're going to um, kind of monitor what's going on and then take it from there. Right. You, you guys, you guys mentioned something about the '90s review, where you get a bunch of acts from the '90s and um, you know go out and tour and do what y'all do, and um, you know just kind of you know go global with it to 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 a degree. Um, Mike, let me ask you this: when when it when it does come to '90s music, and you heard me say it, it's just you know it, it's nostalgic because you know a lot of people say '90s was the best era of uh, or the best decade of music because of its diversity. Not just with the R and B sound, but also the hip hop sound was was so different from different artists. Everybody won because they were all individuals. Nobody like you guys never tried to sound like Jodeci, H Town, any of those groups that came out in the nineties. You guys had your own lane, and you guys won because of that. Um, how, I mean, it, 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 is that something that you guys think back when you uh, think back about the career when you guys began? It's it's a reason that but we didn't know that it was like a cycle like a 20 year cycle in the 70s the groups all had their individual sound too remember that's why we liked the 70s because no doubt or when the fire sounded like they did no, no Ohio doubt. players yep. cameo we right. had sister sledge point of sisters everybody had their own so we're just really a reincarnation of the 70s mm-hmm. the way they had their own sound with Jade had their own uh, SWV had their own sound, Shy. Right. So, um, and it's, con- it's 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 confirmed as far as I'm concerned because, I, as a matter of fact, what a couple of weeks ago, a young lady from Canada uh, wrote me and told me about the, our music, and she was 21 years old, and I was like, 20. What, what do you know about our music? Oh, nice. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I love the nice. I can't. I mean, she knew all everything, words and everything, and I was so flattered. And now you see flat tops, mohawks. <laughs> you see people dressing. It's, it's back. It's the nineties. is back. Uh. <laughs> it's hey, pretty weird. soon, pretty soon we'll have those uh, those uh, suspender joints. You know, with the one strap off and and all that whole little deal. How that was going on? Like y'all right. know, y'all know. Now, I mean, because yeah. you know, the reason why the reason why I mention it, I mean, because of course, you guys you guys broke in at that time when it meant so much, and I'm glad you brought up the fact that there was so many different bands back in the '70s um, um, that was winning because of their diversity. But um, you know, fast forwarding it now to 2012, we don't see that that much, though, right? Right. Uh, you know, it's too. What do you think, Eric? Because you know, I'm a music guy. I can answer that all day. Go ahead, talk. <laughs> well, um. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think uh, a little bit of it is definitely coming back. I mean, we're seeing a lot of these young cats coming out, and they're definitely putting it down. It's just they need a little bit of guidance so that they can have the longevity. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, point in case, 
is Usher took Justin Bieber under his wing, and the rest is history. Um, I mean, in my personal opinion, when I first heard Justin Bieber, I was thinking, well, this kid is good, but I don't think he's, like, you know, that, you know, over-the-top great. But mm-hmm. then as he started to get, you know, his tutelage from, from Usher, you can you can see the growth. I mean, he's definitely grown much, much further than, than where he was when he first came out. So, I mean, he's a totally different artist now than what he was when he first came out. And I think as... Um, I guess we can call us mentors because, like I said, we do do a lot of artist development and vocal lessons and things like that for some of these young up-and-coming artists. So with the experience that we have, we're, we're basically passing the torch along so we can teach them what they need to know to pass the torch on to the next up-and-coming artist that's underneath them. So you what we're trying to do is try to set, um, we're trying to set um, I guess the word would be... Um, just try to set a standard, you know, mm-hmm. because, you know, the people that we grew up listening to, they set a standard for us, and, and we followed that standard. Right. And it was music that was good time music. When you listened to it, you felt good. You remember where you were at the time. When you were a kid and it was carefree days, when you would come home from school and you want to just go outside and play instead of just playing video games. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we grew up going outside and playing. We had video games, and, you know, we stayed inside and played, but... You know, we actually got outside and played, so we got a chance to be out in the neighborhood and see what was going on. And um, hey, and keep it yeah, real, you know, your, you, you know, you know, moms, you know, moms tossed you outside too. Go outside and play, boy. Go out and oh, play. Yeah. Yeah. My mom did that to me all the time. Like you know, but I know but I was cool with it too, though, because you know there was there was kids outside. It was it was okay. It was positively okay. I used to be I used to be mad when my mom told me I had to stay in the house. I used to oh come on. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, those those days, those days, I, I miss those days because it, it was it was those where you 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 you're right. I mean, now it's it, it's filled with distractions, and, and that vibe that we all had back in the day is definitely not here now. So when you guys right. look at the business, when you guys look at the business of music, though, and, and the evolution of it as far as how it's changed from the record labels to a lot of people literally picking up a mic. And, uh, and and pro tools to be able to be you know their own homemade singers. Um, how, how have y'all peeped game and watched how all this stuff evolved? And 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 Mike, I'll start with you. Like, I mean, is it going into a place where you know you you still recognize as a as a you know artist around a bunch of your peers, or is it something that you just wow? You know, I, I can't believe it's changed as much. Uh, it, it, uh see, every now and then there's certain artists that uh, kind of keep it. Believe it or not, you know, and this is just my opinion, like somebody like Drake. See, Drake, his music producer, it's really, mm-hmm. it's really 90s music. It's just more, a little bit more electronic, just a little bit more. Just a little bit, but it's really, because it's chords and changes. Right. That's why people really like his music. You know, they'll say we like Drake, but we like his music too. Because it's, it's a flavor from the 90s where there, you, 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 your heart, your heart can't feel anything unless music changes. When you hear changes and chords and bridges and whatever, mm-hmm. those dynamics is what people feel in their heart. So every now and then you have those artists that sneak it in and creep it in. Now everything is... <laughs> and it's dance. And, and now every DJ yep. swear to, swears that he's a producer now. Right. He'll, he'll go to a club and play somebody else's. He'll play somebody else who made the music, but now he's a producer. So it's like... And a lot of times they don't really know music and melody. They they might know what people dance to, but mm-hmm. that that kills me. So we don't really have enough of the people like us around to kind of stay in it because it's going so far off where people don't even hear melody anymore. That's why, you know, we were kind of worldwide, and we knew that the Asian market, you can't you can have a nice beat over there, but they don't really care about a beat. They want to hear a melody. Right. Always right. like that. So we, we see the change, but then we still see people tr- trying to creep the sound in a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But but the radio dictates it a lot, so it's like only thing you can do is just really hope that you know somebody something comes along that gets accepted. You know, and, and it's, it's supposed and Kirk, to change. I'm gonna ask it you this: when it when 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 you when you think about the just just the 
genres, different genres of music, and, and, and you guys mentioned radio, and that's changed. Uh, record labels and how they sign their artists, that's changed. Um, everything that you guys have done and accomplished, um, even the videos and the <laughs> MTV, what? VH1, what? It's all dominated by reality shows and different things. When you look at the marketing of it, Kirkland, um, how how do you feel about the changes on that end as opposed to, you know, what we just talked about, Mike, with the uh, with the music part of it? What about the marketing and how that's evolved and changed? Um, honestly, I mean, looking at where we are right now, I mean, let's let's be frank. I mean, we we back into the the fast food generation. Everything's got to be quick, fast. We want it yesterday, not today. We want it like right now. So a lot of the stuff that you're seeing, um, especially like the videos. I mean, and you mentioned the reality shows and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the reality shows, but mm -hmm. they're here. And we can't get away from them. And I mean, it's, I'm surprised to even see a video nowadays. You know, <laughs> you turn on MTV or VH1, and you're like, you're expecting to really? see a video. Video. And, and then when you do see one, you're like, wow, they're showing a video. <laughs> so it, it's a drastic change. So I'm still trying to get used to it. But um, I mean, I, I do love seeing a lot of the videos that I do get a chance to see when they do show them. But uh, nowadays, if you want to see a video, you have to go on YouTube to watch it. I mean, if you really want to see one. But right. the marketing strategy, um, I, I think because of the Internet, things have changed drastically. I mean, mm -hmm. so much so that um, look at even on the production side. We're looking at we're competing with 12-year-olds doing music on their computers in their bedrooms. Yep. You know, but Mike and I, I, I think we can say we're blessed, man. Our phone hasn't stopped ringing. I mean, we still get called to production, so... It's definitely a blessing, so I can't complain. But the, the, the one thing, thing, but the, the, the see, one, see the, I say this stuff. The, the marketing people don't sell records from great music anymore. They're marketing tools now. See, when we were around, we couldn't get our own shoes, our own perfume, our own cologne. Now they're mm -hmm. doing perfume deals, shoe deals, headphone deals, and the music is like second. The first one, yep. not priority, are you marketable? Can we build a brand from you? And then right. we can make more money like that. And is that a good thing? Uh, if the politics are on your side, yes, it's a good thing. If the politics isn't on your side, no. Right. That's why people and, like and, Flavor Flav come back and do something. Like, oh, because he was a marketing cat. He was marketable in what he did. He was just right. the face of the public enemy. You know, and he's so crazy looking. He can come back get on TV. Even the Humpy guy, <laughs> if he tries to make a run at it, people watch the Humpy. If you're not marketable right now, there's an issue. Mm -hmm. How how do you guys feel? How do you guys feel about that though? Because you guys, when you guys came in, you guys came in different. Like I said earlier, you guys were you guys were your own men when it came to putting out the kind of music, and you guys didn't emulate you know, all these people that we talked about earlier. You you look at it now and the reason why you guys are won are winning and has won and continue to win because you guys can you guys will have songs that you guys put out in the nineties that will stand the test of time. Fifty years from now people will still be listening to this version of How Deep Is Your Love. You know, the young kids are still gonna dance to Here We Go Again and, and so on and so forth. Honey dip and all. So with that being said, you guys you guys have songs in your catalog that will last forever versus, like you guys just said earlier, everything is fast food, quick, fast, and in a hurry. The song that you hear today may not be great tomorrow, so you got to capitalize on that song now. So my question to you guys is, how, how, can, we, how can we be able to, I mean, you, you guys kind of mentioned it with being mentors and stuff like that, but what else can we do to be able to game these kids, these young people, to be able to try to make those songs like you guys made and, and be relevant 50 years from now and leave that legacy like everybody should. When it comes it's to hard. Music. It's really hard. You know, hey, Mike, let's, yeah. let's do this. Think about what Quincy, we learned a, a valuable lesson from Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones is like our dad and mentor. Who was signing him? He, he told us a while ago, music is, is basically bass, drums, melody. Everything else is fillers or sweeteners. Mm -hmm. and, and we pride ourselves on the music that we do 
you know, with that foundation. And with that foundation, you can build any song, even if the even if the, the beat is a four on the floor or a straight house type beat, which is basically dance. What's going on right now is pretty much house recycled. A lot right. of it is house and club and you know some of the the original dance music that you would hear. And um, if you can take that and put a melody to it and a groove to that same groove, that's what you have today's music, dance music. But um, Quincy and even Michael Jackson even said that music that was just sort of like uh, like the trance type stuff was more. It didn't really have a pulse or a heart. It was just just driving, mm -hmm. almost infectious. But it didn't really go anywhere. It didn't have a melody or anything. It just sort of was one set pace mm -hmm. and in one direction. So it was almost it was so electronic that it didn't have a heart to it. Right. And yeah, see, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I was I was just going to add on what you're saying. It, it's really dictated by the radio. Right? The radio is playing a certain sound, and people want to hear certain things. However, the young producers now they're just these setups, they can go to, to Walmart and buy a, a computer setup, two or three hundred bucks, and now they've got their producer and there are places with their music. They just concentrating on they they concentrate on dance. Um I remember something Jones told us, he said uh, a beat doesn't win a Grammy. You know, the only mm -hmm. beat and the only instrumental that has won Grammys there was commercial was like Hiroshima Hiroshima and, and Herbie Hancock rocking. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you got to have a melody. But see, the, the young producers they don't have nothing to look up to that has you know a lot of melody. So they keep hearing the same old dance stuff all the time. <laughs> it's just pulsating dance. So right. if and it's just, so if they heard more and the way and the way for them to hear more is to go back and just listen to old records. Mm -hmm. Right. That's all they really have to do. Go back and listen to old records and understand the value of melody and put it in what they're doing. Put it on top of, put that on top of what they're doing right now, and that's like the next sensational producer. It's so simple. I don't know why they just won't do it. <laughs> Portrait is our guest here on Branded After Dark, and, and 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 I've said that a lot, man, throughout the years that I've done radio. Is like you know, to me, you got to be if you're going to be a musician, you got to be a student of music. You can't just go play something. And expect for you to be able to have that 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 overnight success. I mean, it may happen to some people without even studying and acknowledging the the, the greats before them. But um, to me, it's, it, 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 I always see music as a fraternity, where you know yeah. anybody that gets baptized into this fraternity, you know you you got you got to remember the greats. You know the 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 hall of greats. You can it goes back decades on decades. So you know not just your genre of music. You got to go look at other people too and they successes. So, you know, with that I, I think I think you're right. I mean education and, and educating these musicians and even the fans. Fans need education too. We need to gain yeah, the fans up on that too. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Right. If they if they're willing to listen and that's one of the things I'm talking because I'm writing a book called uh, the Do's and Don'ts of a Music Producer. Mm -hmm. And it talks about very simple, thirty pages. Uh it's gonna be online e book. And it talks about everything that you're talking about right now. And each chapter, and it's to help young producers. It's not to criticize. It's to help young producers. And I'm, you know, quoting a lot of things that were said to us, uh, and me personally, about Quincy Jones, Clyde Davis, Smokey Robinson, like the greats. We went back. And I remember right. everything we met these great people, everything from Isaac Hayes to Lou Ross, they all, they all get some kind of information that store and it helped me go back so now I'm delivering it to you know the young producers in book form uh, right. speaking on what you're talking about my man mm. they just need to be educated about it absolutely so, so when, when are we going to see this book because I'm, I'm ready to buy I, I, you know <laughs> hey speaking of that we need to gain people on trying to pick up a damn book and read too so you know that's important <laughs> So when, when when can I get this book, man? I'm trying to read some new material right now. You, you should have it in the next couple of months. The the, the final draft has been written already. Um, now I'm just uh, I was talking, I was discussing with Eric earlier today how I don't know what pictures you know I want to put pictures in it in between. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I don't know. With that's the only part I'm trying to figure out how I do in between. 
The, right. the final draft is written. It's ready to go. It's just that I don't know if I'm going to put pictures and things. So you, you, you're talking the next two or three months. It'll be very simple, 30 pages, big words, everybody, not little <laughs> novels, 300 pages like a <laughs> almanac. <laughs> you know, people can see. <laughs> You know, so That's what's it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. But you know, can I say this too? Go ahead. We all have daughters now and and kids, and the thing is that what keeps when you get older and you start uh, seeing the new change of music, even if you don't like it, just understand it. Like I might not like some of the stuff that I hear, but my daughter likes it, so mm-hmm. I have to understand why. Right. Right. You know what I mean? She's sixteen. They're 16, both of my daughters, and right now they can't really say, oh, my dad is bad. But when he, when they get, like, 22 in college and they start getting deep in the music, they're going to say, oh, yes, my they will. God, my dad You better believe it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because yep. now the daylight, so I'll give it time. <laughs> yeah. No, and I and I agree. I mean, because, you know, I used to have this, this big issue about um, just just making sure that, you know, to me I always feel like, as musicians or a fan of music, you you need a you need another channel to turn. Sometimes you don't want to look at the same thing on every single channel. You want to at least turn the channel, get something different, a different variety. And right. um, I kind of feel like over the last maybe two decades, they took that away from us. They took it away from us via radio. They took it away from us via TV um, and and different other outlets or whatever. And 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 it's not even about hating on the on on the current state of music it's it, it, i'm past that now it's it's about giving you know people like yourself and shy and swv and all these people that that has helped build the 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 music foundation um a, a chance to be able to share that spotlight too that other channel that we would talk about you know what i mean so you know that that was my only thing when it comes down to it because like you you know i have to understand it as well so that was something that i learned as i went over these last few years when it comes to music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, understand that, okay, I might not like it, but I do understand Mm -hmm. why my kids like it. Exactly. However, if they're educated more um, about it, I think, I think it would, I think it would hit them. I think it would hit them because you hear a lot of young kids saying, oh, stuff sounds, I don't like the way everything sounds so much the same. They're they're not, we're not dumb as human beings, you know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's I don't know what kind of um, I I I like uh, Monique. See Monique, so she would go back. She bring the older people, the older acts back. That's what I like about mm-hmm. Monique. Mm-hmm. She would bring the older, you know, and and so the, the audience on there like, oh oh, new audience and older audience. Oh okay, I remember them, and the other people are like, oh wow, that was out fifteen years ago. Wow, <laughs> you know, we need more like that. Right. Right. And, and people and people be surprised, like you know what I'm saying. They were like, you know, you don't have to dust off the '90s. Think about it. The '90s haven't been, you know, it's it's still, it, it's, it hasn't been that long. It hasn't even been 15 years, right? It's still fresh, still. Well, let's we just say it's relevant. It's, it's still it's re- exactly. Relevant. There you go. There you go. Um, point in case, Justin Timberlake ripped off a lot of the stuff from the '90s to do his solo project. I mean, even before he left NSYNC. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, one of our buddies that plays guitar for Justin, he was showing me some of the stuff they were playing. I'm like, that's the time. He, I mean, he, like, took stuff from the time and a bunch of other things, but, but that just goes back to show you where the influences come from. A lot of Absolutely. the influences come from the 70s and the 80s. And uh, we could say we were 80s babies. I mean, we grew up around this stuff, and it was just, that's when music was really fun. It was, uh, the eighties was more the party, the party vibe for music. And, um, you know, that was kind of the, the launching path for us to hit in the nineties because we were, you know, basically what Quincy would call woodshedding back then mm-hmm. and, and perfecting our craft. So when the nineties hit, we were coming just out of the eighties onto the nineties with, right. you know, here we're new, fresh and new, and here's our sound. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of these artists that, that have evolved and come up with it, if you ask them what do they listen to, you'd be surprised what would come out of their mouth. I mean, mm-hmm. um, Mike and I have worked with a lot of people over the years. I mean, we've worked with everybody from 
Quincy Jones to remixes for ZZ Top and David Bowie. So, I mean, we've worked and everybody with else is in between. It's just the commercial people that everybody seems to. We, 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 it's so much work. <laughs> and, and I mean, surprisingly, man, these guys were, were actually fans of ours, believe it or not. We were like shocked. I mean, um, even I, I worked with MJ before he passed away for about seven and a half months, and uh, one of our buddies called me up on the phone with him. I didn't realize it was him. I'm like, well, if this is MJ. Give me a shamo. He's like, what? I said, give me a shamo, man. And it's like, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, and you know, you can't shamo. He starts laughing, right? Uh -huh. like, oh, man, there is Michael Jackson on the phone. <laughs> but, man, he knew every one of our songs, word for word, every lyric, everything. And he was like, oh, I love that group. He started singing Here We Go Again, everything. So That's good. you never know who is going to be a fan or who's going to be someone who's going to gravitate to your music. So right. I guess the best lesson we learned is just really being true to yourself and believing in what you're doing and not letting the dream killers you know, step on your toes or tell you you can't do it because we heard we couldn't do it for years. Mm -hmm. And how we how we got our deal is Mike and I, we went up to Capitol Records. This is before we even had a deal. We had a demo. And um, we went up to Capitol Records. We had a demo, and uh, we had a song called Communication. We were writing the lyrics to that in the lobby while we were waiting for our meeting. And after we had our meeting, we played them some stuff, and they said, well, what else do you have? And they said, uh, well, we got this other song, but we don't have the the vocals on it, but we can sing it for you. And uh, we sang it for them, and they said, oh, when did you guys write that? It was about 20 minutes ago while we were waiting for you guys in the lobby. And, <laughs> yeah, the rest is kind of history. They gave us, what, a seven-album Yeah, they gave us a mm -hmm. seven-album deal, our own production company, and the whole nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, wow. nobody was writing. The only people that were doing it is Mick and Dixon, which we love them to death, and they still there. You know, they're bad. And and uh, <laughs> Shy and mm -hmm. us, I think those, those are the only ones who we, everybody else was getting. And Josie, of course. We were the only groups that were writing our own material, so it came from our own perspective. And yeah. uh, you had sound and you had style see people like our sound but it was really the style right it's a difference you know tony 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 had a style jodeci had a sound you know the sound exactly. was kc and jojo mm -hmm. tony tony was style because it was kind of weird Raphael was not the greatest singer but he made you feel that he was a great writer exactly exactly so it was it, it, it's style versus sound that was happening in the 90s a lot and so you had that combination and people could choose mm -hmm. you know and, and that and that was the difference that's when people say well i can't really understand what made y'all so different i said because we had a style we didn't have a lead singer because all every hit had a different person singing so we right. didn't have a permanent lead singer we, we right. didn't it was a style that we had mm. classic hits like here we go again and that's the track I'm going to play right now. And then after that, we're going to come back. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, but I'm going to actually let uh, a few ladies that's on the line right now that want to holler at you. If y'all want to holler at you, hey, I swear, every time I hear that song, man, it just takes me back to like a point in time where I just I was vibing. And remember, back in the day, as we had Michelangelo, Mr. Kirkland in the building, Portrait, the group. Remember, we was rocking tapes back then. So I remember throwing that thing in my tape in my tape deck at one point in time. And, 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 and that was always a, 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 a nice little lane to be in where, you know, the ladies would just be vibing off of, uh, off of that joint, though. Like, it was nice to see the ladies dance back then. It was cool. So I got to shout out the ladies of the 90s. <laughs> shout out to Forsman for putting that down. We love y'all, man. And you know, hey, off top, though, can I tell y'all this? Like, and I know you guys probably get a lot of fellas that just be like, you know what, I want to thank y'all for putting out these albums because if it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't have been able to... uh you know, really take it to that next level with my lady friend or girlfriend or wife or whatever. So I know y'all get that a lot, right? <laughs> all we got that. You know what? Surprisingly, we get to well, not surprisingly, all the football, NBA, baseball, all the sports pro dudes. Yeah, they loved us <laughs> because and because we were okay. We were like we were the first R and B group that we, we had a page in Source magazine because Source used to be all hip hop. Mm -hmm. We were the first got the cover because rappers liked us. They felt like, yeah, 
you know, our non-threatening, non-threatening uh, R&B guys who appeal to the hip-hop crowd. <laughs> so it's always like this. We were cool with guys. They right. always liked us. Right. That's crazy. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, we love we've it. been referred to as uh, that's the baby-making music. That's what I'm saying. That like, you know, but, you know, the the Here We Go Again joint, I mean, it just seemed like at that point in time back in the 90s, the ladies just couldn't help but get out of their seat and just vibe to that song. And the fellas, you know, us fellas were just, you know, we were sitting back just vibing with them. You know what I mean? So that was that was a nice, that was, so so on, on behalf of the fellas, thanks a lot, Portrait. Appreciate it. <laughs> No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Our pleasure. <laughs> Our pleasure. Let's take to the lines right now. If you guys want to holler at Portrait, definitely call in 347 215 8653. This is Branded After Dark. Um, and before I do take this first call, um, can we go ahead and, and, and throw out there, like, is the remaining group, are you guys all together together as far as the members that's, that's not on the line with us right now? Well, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, I wanted to give a shout-out to Irvin Washington. Irvin mm-hmm. actually couldn't be on the phone with us tonight, but uh, he's back east in Providence, Rhode Island right now, and he comes okay. out to California frequently. So um, Mike and I are in California, and Philip Johnson, who is one of the original members of Portrait, he's in California, and we're working with Phil as well. And um, Kurt, uh, Kurt Jackson, who was one of the members that came in uh, early in the stage, he was um, he was out with us for a little while. He actually just retired from okay. Portrait, and he's pursuing a few other things right now. So, wanted to give a shout out to the fellows, Philip, Irvin, yep. and Kurt. This is for you guys, and a uh, special shout out to our buddy Kevin Gray, who uh, he actually hooked us up with you, man. I want to say thank absolutely. you. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's, and that's and that's you, that dog and, out of Boston. And, and you can actually uh, say it right now because I got him mic'd up and on, branded after dark right now. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, what's up, hey, bro? Man. What's up? Chilling, <laughs> chilling, chillin', man. Y'all like this thing, man. I'm loving y'all's music, man. You know, I'm glad y'all came on, you know. And uh, I love that day-by-day joint, man, y'all did in Boston back in back in 2010, man. Oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's the baby maker right there. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that, that's Irvin. We call Irvin Dark Gable. That's that baby man. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. For sure. And ladies, if you're listening, he still got it. He's just as silky as ever. <laughs> yep. Yep. He's like fine wine, just got better with time. There you go. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a few calls right here. Let's go ahead and kick start it right here with uh, our own Miss Baby Girl from that 813 Florida repping. Princess, you are on the line with the group Portrait. What's up, baby? Hi, how are you? Hello. <laughs> how you doing? I'm good. Um, before I ask the questions, I do want to say that I am a 90s baby. <laughs> and I was yeah. one when y'all first dropped our album, but I still know the song heart by heart. So, yeah. Did, just, did she really go there yeah. and say she was one when y'all dropped your album? Yes. On, <laughs> yes. <laughs> They dropped it in October. I was one. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. No, that's cool. That's cool. That's, uh, did, was it, were your parents playing it, or just just kind of you heard it by just researching? Or what? What When no. you heard it, was it... See, when I first it heard it, I was on like... You, or you just, yeah, did you just like it automatically? Was it, you know, someone played it for you, or how did you... Did you when I was know five. It? Yeah. yeah, when I was five... Um, I first got introduced to y'all and all that mattered when I was five. And hold me close, that is my shit. And um, my dad used to have the old VHSs with over like uh-huh. eight hours of videos. Says so, it's Betamax too, huh? Yeah. I, I, I was kind of forced into it, but since I am a singer and, and I love the bass, and that last joint, um, that bass line was sick. FYI, just, just saying. Amen to that. Oh, yeah, well, thank, you, thank you. That's great. Really really not worthy. I'm, I'm like shocked and appalled now. <laughs> what? <laughs> introduced at five. I'm like, man, I'm over here for chicken up speed, bro. Yeah, I can't help it. I'm sorry. It's like I love music, and I have a thing like, for That's the part that I love the most. That you come from the musical. You coming from you coming from the musical point of view, and that's uh, I, I really like that because. Uh, 
it, it was really about the music. And that's the thing about mm-hmm. it. You know, sometimes we all want to be original, and a lot of groups don't stay together. Um, and sometimes it makes you hesitant to go out because you say, I don't want to cheat. They have their favorites. But when you had groups that it was about the music as well, they really don't care as long as you play the music that they fell in love with. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I, music. I, I feel you thank on you. that. Oh, no problem. No thank you because your music is off the chain. But out of all the oh, albums that you guys did and out of all the tracks that you guys were released and put out there, which ones were your favorite to record and why? Oh, wow. Mark, Mike, where do we start? Oh, I, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> to me, all that matters was because we grew up. See, when we did the first album, we were just wild, and we were just writing, and we didn't care. We didn't think about competition, and that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. But we had traveled to, like, 20 different countries in between the first album and the second, so we seen some things, and we grew up, and we knew exactly what we wanted on the second one. So for me, for me personally, musically, second one uh, is my favorite piece of our work. You know, I think I have to agree on that one. Um, I think a couple of the songs on the All That Matters album, actually three in particular, um, Hold Me Close, uh, Much Too Much, and Here's a Kiss, I think those three songs kind of represented uh, times in each of the group members' lives where we all kind of went through some different changes relationships-wise, family members, friends, and um, just close friends, a lot of things that they were going through. Um, Here's a Kiss, which, you know, basically relates back to a few friends that we've known that, that, you know, women that were going through some major changes, and they were real apprehensive about getting into a relationship. And and the lyrics basically just kind of reflect what they were going through and and where we were as friends and, and wanting to be in a relationship or a committed relationship. And then um, the other songs, like uh, Much Too Much, um, I won't say any names who who it was, but uh, a few of the members were going through some changes, and, you know, the song just sort of reflected different views of each member and their their section of of what they went through in their relationships, and we just kind of added it together, and that's how the song came came about. But it it dealt with relationships and just... um, how things could change so drastically from misunderstandings. And then um, I think I said um, hold me close, but I, I want to say. Um, yes, you did. It's, um, it's um, oh, God, what's the song? Now I'm having a senior citizen moment. Um, hold me close. <laughs> it's 2 a.m. in the morning. Hold me close. Uh, uh, I think that's kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, I don't, don't want to get aggravated on, on the phone. But, uh, that's why I'm kind of steering away from that one because I'm like, wow, okay. Uh, yeah, that one definitely is. We're we not children here, so we we all grown folks here. We can talk about. That's it. right. Right. But, that's that right. But that, that's when we go back to talking about baby making music. That that song is definitely a baby maker. Yes, and, it is. And honestly, that was about just getting it in, getting it in with your loved one, and just making it count. That's right. That's right. And making yeah. it happen. But before Brand takes another caller, can you guys sing me a song or send me a snippet or just give me like five seconds of shoo doo doo doo? It don't even matter. Uh, give me five. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I, I didn't get that. Give you five seconds of what? Singing. Because I want, I mean, sing me of something. Singing? I don't care. Yeah, well, I don't you think don't, you're shooting. You'd only get half the you only get half the music. Well, half no, of all of us is gonna get you half. <laughs> no, you want somebody get out so somebody get tenor or just tenor or bass. All right, or Eric, 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 you feel me? I just I just I start from here we go, here we go again, here we go. Here, here we go, go again, here we go. Here we go. You want us to do here we go again? We do it again. Okay. You can feel it the time to make a scene because I'm out with my homies. I know you know just what I mean. So don't just walk up on me. There's a time and there's a place where we can talk about. I don't want to be disgraced. All your screams and shouting, but here we go. 
Going through the same thing. Here we go. Don't want to play the same game. But not again. I don't want to go through it. There you go. <laughs> I had to move my door. I had y'all. I had y'all. There you go. <laughs> but thank there you. Go. You guys are awesome. There you go. And All right, I can't let me, wait. Let me go ahead and grab the next caller. Let's go ahead and put in Sweet Aaron. Mike is on Branded After Dark with the group Portrait. Go ahead, Sweet Aaron. How you doing? Good. How are you guys? Hello. Perfect. How are you? Hello. <laughs> Okay, let me just say, with you, with you just singing that, my heart just fell on the floor. <laughs> and it brings back memories. So, that was so awesome, huh? Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. That was only that was only half of us. But, I wish it was all four of us on here so you can really well, hear how I we. Just, I just totally melted because let me tell you, when I was, I wasn't one. <laughs> I was in the <laughs> I was in the the ninth ninth or tenth about ninth and tenth grade when when you guys um came on the scene and I just I remember in fact you guys' first album was um I had won a radio contest back then and your album was what my prize was and I was elated. I mean it was it was Totally awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. So, and let me just tell you one thing, since we're all grown folks, you guys tried yeah. really, really, really hard to have me walking around like a pregnant 10th grader. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that music, I'm telling you. <laughs> I have a freaking 20-year-old right now. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> That's a beautiful groan because life was made. That's life was made. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that at all. You know what? We always had a nick. This is Michael Angelo talking. We always had a good nick for ballads. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, you did. <laughs> and, 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 but, you know, so it's funny because um, I think what what it is is we have the perfect pieces, uh, the per- the perfect voices, to emulate emulate a real smooth, non threatening tone song. Um and we weren't the greatest you know, we're not like Jodeci with those heavy, 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 heavy voices. We had to form a different style and that's why I think our soft vocals along with our ballads helped. Right. And you guys you guys you guys totally mesh very well together and you know, always have. And like I said, thank the good Lord, but you guys really tried me. <laughs> wow. She got me laughing so hard my cheeks are hurting right now. That's funny. That's so funny. That's Aaron, so funny. Aaron Goo- I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Appreciate the call. Let me you take a couple of quick me. ones. Let me take a couple of quick more calls. We do have portrait live on Branded After Dark. Let me take this call from Ms. Denia, who wants to say hello to the group portrait as well. Welcome to the show, sweetheart. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, portrait. How are you? We're great. doing great. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, baby girl. Hey, Miss Sweet Erin. Good evening, Mr. Brandon. <laughs> hey, you got a you got a question for uh for for the for the fellas, or you just want to? I do actually. Go ahead. I would to know, have you guys ever sung in Spanish, and how have you thought about being in Spanish? Do you want to collab with a Latino artist? Uh, well, and that always goes on because um, I think if I heard you correctly, you said collaborations and working with other artists. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because we were producers first. That's how we came and got a deal. We were producing first, and uh, they just said that you guys write all these you know, songs for other people. Why don't you guys do your own material? So we, right. we're always doing that. Yeah, that's, we, that's where we first, that's where we are first. So, yeah, we love uh, collaborating, getting new artists. You know, we do demos to people, just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Why? You can sing, or you know somebody who can sing. <laughs> I think it's the, um, hello? Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think, yeah, I think the, the bigger question was, have you guys ever sung in Spanish? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, French, 
And you know what? We were supposed to do How Deep Is Your Love in Spanish. I don't know what happened. Uh-huh. No. But it would be cool to do our ballads all in Spanish. That would be beautiful. I'm just like, I'm like, because I have a lot of friends that are Hispanic and, I, and I'm and I'm conversing in Spanish, and I'm just thinking, I'm like, oh, my God, those songs would be phenomenal in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I never thought about it like that because, um, wow. You know, okay, so I'm a music guy, and I listen to all kinds of music, and I notice about Spanish music or Latin music, the uh-huh. melodies and the lyrics are so powerful and deep, and they don't just put lyrics on when they write those love songs, they really uh-huh. say things like, "You're, you're, 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 you're the air that I breathe, and without you, uh-huh. my, you know." And I think if we would have done something like that, we probably re- would have reached a bigger crowd. I don't know why we didn't at the time. Right. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. we did touch a little bit on um, on yours forever on the first CD. We did uh, well, just a little bit of Spanish, but. Um, it was uh, basically what te quiero mi carrera y seré tuyo para right. la siempre. But yeah. um, uh-huh. we had planned on doing a lot more. I mean, we did some some um, Korean translations. Uh, we did a few things, but nothing and major. Right. So yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that's I think that was primarily because of the record company. They didn't really push us in a direction to do any of the translations. Um, right. Because we were working with a lot of different artists that we were producing, so we didn't necessarily push our own projects towards doing anything in any other language. But, I'm, I'm going to keep it truthful. I'm going to keep it really truthful. This is for the radio everybody else is hearing right now. It was told to me, and I cannot say any names, but it was by somebody from the company that they actually thought we were going to fail. Mm. They thought we was, was a tax write off. Yeah, that that yeah. was it. Wow. They thought we was gonna fail, and what happened was, when the record came out, it got it got it took off and went number one so fast they didn't know what to do. <laughs> and so now, when the record company is pushing, when a record company has a record that that's taken off and they're not prepared, you lose a lot of sales, you lose a lot of fans. Mm. So. They didn't see us as big as we had gotten. They didn't know. So that's why they didn't really push us to do all that other stuff. Now, once the second album came out, then they got really serious and started pushing us around the world, doing French, doing Korean. Mm-hmm. But that's the truth. Right. I don't wow. know. Well, the good. one thing I can say is you will be hearing some Spanish on the next project coming out for sure. Yay. Yep. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, for there you sure. Go. There you go. There you go. Deny appreciate it. Let me uh, take one more caller. Let me take this call from the 310 with the 988. You mic'd up and on branded after dark with the group portrait. What's up? Here we go. Don't want to play uh, this game. game. I'm not a kid. Uh-oh. I don't want to go through this. What's up, Uh-oh. fam? This is Shiro. Oh, this is my girl. This is my girl. Shiro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, Miss, Miss Hi, Tyler. my fam. You know, I'm still getting the blues and, like, heated for y'all being in the bed with me in my video, right? You know I'm still getting the blues for that. <laughs> uh, so, hold on. Hold on. You better tell us why the hell you disappeared. Where you, at? <laughs> you know what? You still banging on me after all of these years. They used to always do this to me, just like straight, like you strong on me all the time. <laughs> well, no, hey, well, the public needs to know. This is not a regular caller. This not is at all. The public. This is woman. This, this is a woman is... who can write and sing her butt off. With a with, a with a new with a planet. new ill single that that is that is beyond beautiful. You know what I mean? Very, 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 very good to have you call in, Miss. As a surprise, Miss Shiro. Well, you know, I wanted to just call in and, and give my fam love. I'm so proud of you guys, and you know, I've always been proud of you guys. And I just love the fact that you guys are coming back. We are coming back. Real music's coming back. And you know, uh-huh. I just appreciate and have always loved you guys. You guys are my fam, and you know, just. 
I, I just am so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you, Sarah. Likewise. Likewise. Thank Man. you. Thank you. This Probably girl's got good. probably, hey, we did a version of um, Whitney Houston's, and, and I won't even have to say the name of the song, but Cyril <laughs> killed it. <laughs> Greatest love of all, man! Oh my God! Hey, first of all, listen, Shiro, Shiro, give him your number so he can pass to us, so we can talk afterwards. Just too much, too many memories. <laughs> well, you know, man. Tom has it. He has all my hookups. He could definitely pass it to you guys. I got it. You know, he's 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 giving me mad love. He's so supportive, and you know, he actually allowed me to drop my single first time on his on on um on his blog station, so it was such a blessing to have him interview me as well. So, you know, I just, when I saw that you guys were going to be on, I said, oh, i got to give a shout-out to my fam. i got to uh, give my love to them. Uh, okay, but we all had the same, it, it, we had the same family. We were in the same, same family. Yes. So it's yes. Uh, yes. same management and everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. What a, what a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Well, I can't believe a gyro boy. Wow. <laughs> I know. How about you that? That's so crazy. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> when they talk about people that have it in the business, she's got it. Mm hmm Aww. And yeah. that it factor, that wow factor, when somebody opens their mouth and starts singing, you just immediately know that's a star. This is the quality Aww. that gyro has, seriously. Oh, yeah, my and, Don't and make me hey, cry. It's always an honor to work with you. I mean... We learned from you, too, because when she started singing on, on Greatest Love of All, I was like, okay, I'm sticking to the backgrounds. And can perform, too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've seen, uh, Shiro, I've seen some of, your, uh, some of your performances, you know, uh, not performances, but your photos. And, I, you know, it was, it was one venue out there in L.A. where I, it was somebody that I, that I know that went to see it, and, and, and they told me that you were you – were, you you tore it down. You definitely tore it down. Oh, oh yeah, she's thank a performer you. Recently, so, yeah. Thank yeah, you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but again, sorry. I just I just wanted to call in and just give you guys some love. I know this is your time, and I'm not here to intrude. I just love you guys. You know that, and I just had to call in and just give my love to you guys and let you know that I'm just so proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. I know you're going to do it. Uh, we don't uh, ever uh. stop. We don't ever yeah, stop. Yeah, that's right. Really Same back to you. Same back to you. Thank you. We've got another project to work on, Mike. Yeah, yeah we definitely got to work together. That's why we make sure, let's make yeah. sure we all have a contact with each other. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, mut the mutual definitely. respect is to you, too, as well, honey. I, I will that's make sure I quarterback that for you guys and make sure that I pass that on to both. And uh Chiro, you, you, you surprised you surprised me tonight, girl. You definitely <laughs> did. You definitely did. I had to do it, um, I had to do it. I like I said, I love them and I'm just so in support of them and what they do and have always been that way and till the day I die I will always be that way. I love you guys so much. Um you know, you. God is doing great things with us and so I just look forward to what he's gonna do in the future. And I'm just, again, I can't tell you guys how proud I am of you guys. I just truly am. Hey, thank oh, you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so Amen much. She so, I love right, you. Man. We love you, too, <laughs> <laughs> And he uh, has yeah. my number. I'm going to get off the phone so you can give some other wonderful, pretty women that kind of <laughs> trying to call in and get, attack you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we will keep in contact, and yeah, this, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, for sure. For sure All right, definitely. talk to Love you, later. Shiro. <laughs> Love, Love you, you too. too. All right. All right, bye. Beautiful Shiro calling. Wow. Surprise me. Surprise, oh, surprise, wow. surprise. But that is good. That is good. And before... We get ready to wrap this up with you guys. I know a lot of people online have been sending emails and text messages and tweets and all that good stuff. Are you guys on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff, so your fans can be able to get at you guys? Yeah, we're actually on Facebook, and uh, we're actually about to start another Twitter page because, uh, like I said, we've, we've gone through a few changes. So 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to bring everybody up to date and let everybody know exactly what's going on, where we are now, and start giving out some snippets of things so people can kind of get a feel for what real R&B is. And you know, take it back, you know, so people can get a, a taste of it. So we'll definitely be around. Perfect. For perfect. sure. You guys want to toss out your Facebook page or? Oh, it's just yeah. You you when they type in when they type in portrait, mm -hmm. they'll be able to say because they'll say portrait fan page. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's right All right. There. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys and girls want to go ahead and and hit them up and and get them on Facebook while they can and. Twitter is coming real soon. Make sure y'all go ahead and do that. And, fellas, I, I can't thank you enough for staying on and hanging out with me for a little bit over an hour. It's definitely a, a great deal. Uh, I, I love you guys' energy, and I, I can't wait to see you guys come out with new material. And, um, and, and, and you, you, know, you, you know the drill. If there's anything y'all need, you know we got you right here live and direct. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's you definitely guys been look out on YouTube. Look, on, look out on YouTube. So I'm going to do a little commercial about the book coming out, too, so you'll see it on YouTube. Producers, Ooh. it's called The Do and Dumps of a Music Producer. There you go. There you go. Live and direct. Fellas, it's been a blast. Next Legacy.